Muy buenos, buenos días. Good morning. Good evening in Beijing. Welcome to this seminar on renewable energy and its teaching in university engineering careers in China and Latin America. This online seminar will be uh, spoken in Spanish and Chinese, and we have simultaneous interpretation in English, Chinese, and Spanish. You can choose your language in the lower part of the screen, clicking on the globe icon. I'm Roberto Lafontaine, director of the Center of International Cooperation for the Teaching of Chinese Language, CLEC and the Regional Office of Latin America and the Caribbean. Our center in Latin America and the Caribbean teaches Chinese in public and private institution and national and local governments and secondary schools and primary schools. We would like to thank your participation in this online seminar where we have uh, now uh, people from the academic world, from Chinese and Latin America, regarding their experience on renewable energies and their teaching on Latin America and China. We thank you sincerely. We thank sincerely the University of Electric engineer of the north of, uh, of Chile, the uh, National University of La Plata in Argentina, in, in, in Argentina, and the University of the South of China, as well as uh, the uh, Chilean University for their cooperation on, uh, for the participation of their high level uh, teachers. And here we are putting in touch Latin American and Chinese uh, professors, university professors on re, uh, renewable, on, on the subject of renewable energy, which is a very important uh, topic for the development of our regions and countries. Any question, you can send your comments through the Q&A uh, area that you will find in the lower part of your screen. Let us remind you that this webinar is being recorded and will be sent later on to your email and it, and it will be published in our YouTube channel as well. Regarding the chat section, we will share the links of the web pages, Instagram and YouTube. I'd like to introduce our first panelist Doctor in Electronic Engineers from the Polytechnic University of, of Catalonia. He has developed research on switched power converters for non-conventional renewable energy systems, mainly highlighting photovoltaic systems connected to the network. He has published in the Institute of Electric and Electronic Engineers and is a member of the College of Engineers of Chile. With more than 20 years of experience teaching different theoretical and practical subjects in the areas of engineering and physics, he has participated in disciplinary and interdisciplinary research and innovation projects in national and international institutions. Currently, he is the Dean of the Engineering School of the University of San Tomás in Chile. Dr. Negroni will introduce the intelligent grid, which is a key factor in the use of energy. Welcome, Juan José, and thank you for your participation. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be here. I'm going to share my screen. Let me ask you if you are seeing it well. 
to begin with. And for those who are here with me this day, I greet you. I'm going to speak today as in the intelligent networks as a key factor in the use of energy for the renewable energies. I want to contextualize the energy of Chile. The technologies that are behind these microgrids and the technologies to take a deep dive into the application of these networks, also the challenges of engineering and training of engineers in the 21st century. Chile is a long and narrow country characterized by having diverse uh, weathers, hot in the north, very cold in, in the Patagonia in the south with lots of lakes. This favors the production of renewable energy, non-conventional renewable energy, highlighting solar energy. In this, then Chile has a lot of renewable structures in this longitudinal structure of the system, we have an energetic road, which is prone to failures because of the concentration of energy production. The fact that we have a sure operation also provokes a low level of renovation or innovation. So we need to find spheres for innovation and entrepreneurship in the area of energy. That's how the intelligent microgrid, these systems of bidirectional uh, power production systems integrate different sources of energy that is the conception of having in small small towns with a very good distribution of energy of power this sort of micro intelligent microgrid has been talked about a lot and what can uh, we change the generation of energy the first thing is to have a massive electric production to have a power production closer to where the population is. These micro grids uh, are allow for the distribution of electricity from suppliers to consumers using digital technology, thus integrating renewable generation sources in order to save energy. The advance of the we have to have intelligent algorithms and the advance of engineering in microgrids. To, to, today we have better sensors, uh, better actuators to have, and we have legislation as well that, that uh, promotes the generation of microgrids. Micro in intelligent uh, networks. How does this microgrid interact in a city, for example, cities with self-generation, where we have different types of energy, uh, geothermal, biomass, solar, and wind energy. And this production is intercommunicated to be able to have a better interaction uh, regarding the trunk or general public gre uh, uh, power grid. This function, we can uh, reproduce it in smaller units in neighborhood grids as well. The advantage of these micro grids are very simple. One is that they keep on functioning when the main grid doesn't. It allows power generation in the event of a disaster 
so that hospitals or emergency services, emergency services can continue to operate. It reduces the dioxide carbon emissions into the atmosphere, contributing to fight against climate change. It produces energy efficiently at a low cost. And something which is very meaningful, it improves the operation and stability of the general power grid, the radiation distribution of energy in more secure and optimized areas, which are, and there is a lot of technology that allows the different uh, points to be able to have this distribution. The generation technology, which is, we have to, to have micro turbines, we have photovoltaic uh, di diesel groups. Another type of technology is in the, correct, the character of renewable energy. That is the wind, photovoltaic, solar, and thermal. Biomass and biogas and micro turbines are also important. Chile has an important exploration of geothermic and marine uh, energy generation. Another important point of the energy is to take a look at the demand where we have uh, boilers of natural gas boilers, uh, coolers, and uh, heaters. Another important point in this uh, aspect is are the technologies associated to energy uh, energy how we store energy. We had uh, liquid phosphate iron, and we have super, there are some other technologies which are more, uh, e, e, uh, another, uh, some other uh, technologies like hydrogen, term, thermal storing and super condensers. In, in terms of energy storing, we, we have batteries of uh, acid PB, Li-Ion, VRB, SNBR, and uh, uh, solid oxide of uh, fuel batteries. For our intelligent microgrids, we have the technology in the area of control. The interrupters of isolation stop the condensators and all has to do and also around the technology of the control of these microgrids, electric microgrids also. It is very important to understand uh, the technological part uh, all this comes with the social part, uh, with the methodology of intervention. How can we build confidence according to the locations? And can we, how can we build uh, this smart grid and also to promote this with education as training? Very fast. And uh, of course, we have low cost of operations that these networks have in terms of engineering solutions of control and monitoring and the importance of the education. In global terms, I'll be a little bit fast <clears throat> right now because I have little time. The microgrids have charging units and generation that must be controlled through data science and all smart algorithms that can makes the economical part with the generation part so they could satisfy the community but also to fulfill the electrical system and it has challenges as well uh, the development of new models for the demand 
estimate the, and long terms and, an, and resource estimates and analysis of this microgrids, uh, the control strategies of the energy. And we, if we can monitor the operation, this is, is based in the relation with the communities. And here I'm um, going to talk about the, the challenges of the engineering. And in 2013 was established 13 challenges for engineering and the studying of the micro electric micro reds, uh, and how to satisfy more than half of these challenges. Because the energy has a very important role in the development in the economic, in the economic development of the countries. The engineers, um, they not only are trained from uh, the point of view of the conger of science and technology, but also they have to have a critical uh, thinking and also they have, must be acceptable of the information and the knowledge. And here I want to talk to you about what we're doing here at the University, Santa Tomas University. We have achieved in our curriculum uh, to determine uh, clear, very, very clear formations regarding to data science and resources. And also we've incorporated uh, different uh, languages electives, and we can highlight the electives of Mandarin. The students have the opportunity to apply so that it can improve their capacities in engineering. I want to talk uh, about in these last few minutes so they can I can say that the engineer must recognize its environment when it's related to the all the requirements of the environment or the needs of the of the environment. Undoubtedly, the uh, the engineers and the qualities are based on their technical knowledge, uh, their strong knowledge of mathematics and science and the creation and the innovation. They must be capable of apply the theory to the real uh, life situations without um, uh, forgetting the knowledge of the social environment, the cultural environment, and the technologies that are can, that can be applied. But undoubtedly, and there are ten values that are very important to any professional. I hope that today. We, we I can agree in some of these values and mostly uh, in the importance that the, 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 the knowledge of the Mandarin has uh, in the development of the new technologies. Thank you very much for your attention and I hope that uh, I am still in the time according to the program. Uh, in respect to my colleagues, thank you very much, Juan Jose. I believe that it's been very important the knowledge of how it is the engineering is taught at the Santa Tomas University, and also it has been a pioneer. Ponce has been a pioneer in the incorporation of Mandarin Chinese in the engineering career as a diff, important differentiate in these times. I want to tell. I want to say also that the Santa Tomas University is signing. Um, uh, with Clegg, an agreement to teach in the career plus Mandarin Chinese, a project that is, is going to be very important. Now, I want to give the floor to my colleague, Sun Mia, who is the subdirector of the Center of the Regional Office for Latin America and the Caribbean, and Clegg, who will introduce Professor Liu. Ming Yang, welcome. Ming Yang is in Beijing. And it is very late there. Uh, thank you very much. Firstly, thank you for the Juan, Professor Juan Jose. Firstly, I think uh, the ecology development and the econo economy development uh, is a reasonable topic. We talk about the balance actually for the soul wind energy so firstly, let's 
we invite the North China Electric Power University, Liu Yongqian. 硕士，同时呢，在法国南希第一大学生产自动化，呃，生产自动化工学的博士，那么呃，也是华中科技大学水利水电工程工学博士，呃，法国南希第一大学的博士后，现任华北电力大学国际合作处的处长，华北电力大学可再生能源学院的教授、博士生导师，呃，是中国可再生能源学会风能专委会的委员。呃，英国工程师协会期刊亚太区的主编，呃，联合国政府间气候变化委员会可再生能源与减缓气候变化特别报告的主要作者。嗯、呃，刘教授的主要研究方向呢，就是风力发电系统的理论与技术的教学和研究工作。所以呢，今天我们特别有幸的请到了刘教授，一方面呢，来呼应一下我们拉美在这个清洁能源方面的这些专家们的这些期盼。呃，看看寻找一下我们中拉在清洁能源方面的合作空间，以及在教学方面的共同点，也是为了以清洁能源这个角度为切入点，看看我们的中文家啊、呃，中文家清洁能源或者中文家工程，在未来在拉美有哪些更多的开拓空间和发展方向。下面呢，我们就把时间交给。So、now, okay, so now let's welcome the Professor Liu. Thank you for the mission. Now I share my screen for our. It's my so glad to meet all the colleagues in Latin America. Now I have a new opportunity to introduce the renewable energy, the industry, and education. I hope we can cooperate with others. Can you can you see clearly? 可以，没问题。OK， 这就全屏了。OK， 好嘞。嗯，呃，我，呃，我，我想呢，这个，呃，这这所大学叫华北电力大学。I'm from North China Electric Power University. It located in Beijing. 这个大学的名字呢，就叫知道它呢，主要是。Its name and it research for the electric. It's for the education ministry, and it scales have thirty thirty thousand students, including twenty thousand undergraduates and twenty thousand postgraduates, and it they research about electric, and it's one of the most biggest university. Today I have four aspects to introduce. First is development of the world's renewable energy industry. Firstly, why we need the energy transition? Why we we need to transit from the traditional energy? I think it's four aspects. The first one is global climate change. And the second is the traditional energy polluting the environment, and I think the also energy is limited. And now the global energy demand is increasing because of the four aspects. Now it's one we want to protect the and so must transform global energy into a clean, low carbon, energy saving economy. And sustainable, and it's the common aspect. Next, what is the renewable energy? Now, the definition is exist widely in nature and automatically regenerate. Now we have some examples. First, solar energy, hydro energy, wind energy, biomass energy, wave energy, tidal. Asian thermal, geo thermal, etc. The biggest features ex extensive exist and the renewable and and the low carbon. Take this in consideration, and the most countries for the EU 
2015, and the renewable energy accounts for the 50% of the total energy consumption. And other countries also made this plan. I will skip it. For the development of renewable energy, from the left picture, we can see it for the Asia Pacific, for the yellow part as Asia, Asia Pacific. And other regions, Africa, Europe, Mid America, and North America. From this, we can see it in Asia Pacific. In Asia Pacific, the renewable energy accounts for the most part. rapidly. And for the total, for the global energy develop is so rapidly. In 2020, renewable energy accounts for more than 10% in global electricity generation. Wind energy and uh, solar energy accounts for the most part. From IEA in 2015, the global renewable energy electricity generation accounts for the 90%. From ARENA, the predict in 2050, the renewable energy will account for the 85%. So in all, the development is developed so rapidly. So the renewable energy now I want to talk about the development of renewable energy in China. By 2020, two years ago, China were accounted for about half of the world of the total installed capacity of the wind energy and solar energy. For the installed wind and solar capacity, it is half in China. And for hydropower installed capacity is a quarter. And for the other re renewable energy as wind energy, solar energy, and hydro energy, China, China is the biggest production country of the renewable energy. In 2021, China's installed renewable energy capacity reached 1 billion, 1 billion point zero six three kilowatts and account for the 44.8%. So now in current, in current states, 44.8% percent So it comes for the 1 billion point zero six three gigawatts. And China's non fossil energy power generation accounted for the 34.5%. The most important is the determination of developing renewable energy of Chinese government. For present, she, on September 22nd, 2020, in 75th UN Assembly, provide we will strive to the peak carbon dioxide emissions by 2030, and we will achieve carbon neutrality by 2060. Uh, we call it a double carbon target. We made this promise, and can we achieve it? Our Chinese government, yes, we will solve it. Yeah, we have 100 million, we have 100 million projects 
we already com completed it. And in 2020, we will go for this target. And we will tell all the people, our, our go government uh, determination, we have concrete uh, solutions for this business. According to the in the past five years, the renewable energy will account for more than fifty percent in the increment of private energy, and for the total energy, we will account for the sixty percent. At the same time. By 2030, we will achieve. We will achieve transit. We will use the non-fossil energy to the main part. And by 2060, we will achieve the carbon neutrality. In 2060. We will achieve the we will achieve the carbon neutrality. We will reach up we will reach about uh, six thousand gigawatts. In fact, it's uh, sixty billion gigawatts. So, in total, the new futures is large scale development is the biggest of the world and a high proportion development. The third is market-oriented development. From the market, we can adjust it from the market to provoke is high-quality development. We use this the skills of the renewable energy. This is briefly introduction of China's. The third is high education of China's renewable energy. So firstly, it's demand for renewable energy professionals in the world is the biggest world. From ARENA, the conservative estimates by, 20, by 2030, per 80 million. By 2050, it was. Well, sure. Uh按照Arena的这个一点五度这种情形，就是这个呃，这这印度气候变化的这个情景场景下的话，就是未来三三未来三十年，那么这个可再生能源就业岗位增长量就是四千三百万。啊，这个世界上世界情况，那么中国
several universities. And now, the high talent cultivation plan for the renewable energy. We have three aspects. For the basic course, they need to study mathematics, physics, English, etc. It's the basic course. And now, professional course, Polytech. For different nature, renewable energy has so many parts. For example, so wind and solar. And for practical, they must have the adequate uh, practice. There's a practice with, that it can be an engineer. One part is the basic course, professional course, and the practice course. It's a, about the, the renewable energy, about the edu high education. We found the balance here. At the same time, China. Uh, we built an alliance for renewable energy in China and the, and the members, more than 118 universities. We, we share the resources. For example, we make the textbook, uh, we do the research, and uh, we do the polytech practice. In total, have three levels for undergraduate. Balance general education with specialized courses, providing a solid foundation study. For master's part, we focus on in innovation and entrepreneurship. The innovation is a technological innovation and a national education for entrepreneurship is guidance and encouragement for doctoral part. We hope it's originally, it's originally for the clean energy technology and this ingenuity. So for the conclusion, I have three opinions. The world's renewable energy industry will develop rapidly, especially wind power and uh, photovoltaic power generation. By 2050, the world's renewable energy should account for 70 to 85% of the electricity supplied. The scale of China's wind energy, solar energy, hydro energy, and other renewable energy industry is already the world's largest. In order to reach the carbon peak in 2030 and the carbon neutrality target in 2060, China's renewable energy industry will continue to grow rapidly in the next few decades. And now, China, China has more than 120 universities to cultivate renewable energy. Undergraduate, master, and doctoral talents, and has built the world's largest and the most professional renewable energy senior talent training system. Cultivating the renewable energy senior talents for China and all the world. For the transition of the new energy and the low carbon for the in innovation technology. Thank you. Thank you very much. Professor Liu has been very interested in your presentation. We are very happy and to be able to listen and how it is taught the renewable energies in China and also the development of these in China. As you said, I think it is the opportunity 
and that is what we are want that we want in CLEG with the regional office in Latin America and the Caribbean to put in to contact the academics of the Chinese universities and and together with Latin American universities. Really hope that after this seminar, there they can have many uh, alliances and encounters between the two countries, between the two regions. And not only um, uh, for the universities that are here, like the uh, University of La Plata and the uh, Santo Tomas University and other universities, they can also be in touch with the uh, Chinese univer university and create together uh, this uh, creation, knowledge co um, creation, as you said, that you make it in a uh, network in China. Let's do it between the two regions. I think that would be great. Now I'm going to uh, introduce Speech of Professor Eduardo Williams and Manuela Pendon. We're going to start with the ladies. Manuela Pendon, engineering, graduated from the Faculty of Engineering of the National University of La Plata in Argentina, Master in Business Administration, more than 15 years of experience in the wholesale electricity market and electricity distribution rates, coordinator of the um, formulation group and evaluation uh, project of FIUNLP. Uh, she's the project formulation and evaluation working group. She's also a teacher and a consultant and evaluator. The professor Adriana Williams is a construction engineer, civil engineer, graduated from the Faculty of Engineering of the National University of La Plata, master in business administration, Vice Dean of the Engineer Faculty of the same university. He was Director of the Industrial Engineering Career. He's a student of the Specialization in Chinese Studies at the International Relations Institute of the National University of La Plata. He's a member of the Commission of the Civil Engineering Career of the Industrial Engineer. He's a member of the Board of Directors of the Faculty of this university. Uh, he is the member of the academic committee of the master's degree in road engineering and is auditor of the project of the world bank project and he has also made auditing and evaluations of projects for the world bank most bo both of them will present the evaluation projects in, in renewable energy teaching and experience of the engineer faculty of the national university of la plata argentina Argentina. Welcome, Manuela. Welcome, William. Uh, Eduardo. Thank you very much for being with us. Good morning for all the assistants in Latin America, the Caribbean, and good evening for, for uh, the, per the people in China. First of all, I want to thank the Clex Foundation for this conference and the Regional Center of Latin America and the Caribbean. And thank you, Robert Lafontaine, its director, and the cultural director, Diana Figueroa, for the invitation to participate in this seminar. And thank you very much once more for allowing us to strengthen our ties between these two centers that are dedicated to the education and the diffusion of our cultural values. I also want to, uh, we want to agree that also um, the ones that made the, pres the presentation before us, Juan Jose and Jun, there was very interesting the presentations and, um, and greetings for Mr. Yan that will follow up. Uh, after our presentation, we will share uh, that our teaching experience and and the transfers of, for the productive um, environment for the evaluation of readable uh, energy projects. For that, we have divided the presentation in, in three aspects. First of all, um, uh, the teaching and experience in uh, transfer experience. The degree teaching, 
Uh, the subject is formulation and evaluation of project. It is a subject of the fifth year of the specialty of its national engineering of the uh, on National University of La Plata. Uh, this subject has a goal to transmit to to trans, uh, to teach uh, the students the all the knowledge that are learned throughout the career, and also to teach the to specific tools so that we can prepare and evaluate projects. Uh, this chair has an interdisciplinary teams with different engineers, with also with different specialties, and also we have colleagues, professionals of, of psychological science. This team is, is concentrating working in this subject from 2009. So this subject is in the latest years of the program, and it covers aspects that are rela directly related with uh, what's related and with all that's uh, related with the engineering, industrial engineering in, in Argentina that is taught in two semesters where we have a strong difference in the, in, in the quantity of students. In the first semester, we have approximately 150 students and the second semesters, we have approximately about 50 students. During this, the, the, we have approximately uh, they, they develop the formulation and evaluation of the project. And this practical work, it is made under the supervision of a group of teachers that weekly they get together with the team and to evaluate the advances and to resolve uh, problems. And um, uh, this work has established three um, aspects that are very important. Um, and they have a video pitch and with three with three minutes uh, duration of three minutes the students can choose the projects in which they are going to work and in the latest years we have seen a growing interest in also related with renewable energies as an example it is you can see that the students have chosen to work uh, for the photovoltaic um, solar energy the biogas energy and thermal generation energy as an aggregated value, and also the residues of the, of the cattle industry, and also the commercialization, the trade of the solar panels for home use. At the end of the subject, the students have a prepared project and evaluate a project as we can define as a prefectibility. Good morning, good evening. Hello. In a complementary way, in the undergraduate uh, level, other university has, other school has developed activities of complementary education. Particularly, we have taught a complementary which was called the sustainable uh, on sustainable development and engineer with low impact. We have a big scope of complementary uh, education and they are linked to renewable energies. The seminar that I have just mentioned of uh, power generation of low impact with unsustainability, they get data and knowledge to discuss the situation of power generation in the region, its economic, environmental, and social impacts, and it links to sustainable development. With, within the context, we approach the climate change and the link between energy and sustainable development. We discuss the different variables of the power uh, world grid, Latin American and Argentinian grids as well, focusing on the participation of renewable uh, energies in the matrix of different countries. We deepen the uh, wholesale power market in Argentina, the price of the energy and its prices. Casually, one of the uh, transparencies used in this seminar shows China as the country 
in the in the world that has in its matrix the greatest participation of renewable energies considering the international agency of renewable energy as a source of this data this that we share is just one of the activities that the journey school offers as, active, as complementary activities, and that nowadays is getting restructured to improve its development. Uh, when it comes to graduate uh, courses, we have had several editions of a course called Formulation and Evaluation of, of Projects Regarding the Generation of Power uh, from renewable sources this course this course has been taught twice with 35 uh, students in each edition the participation has been of gra graduated engineers from uh, of different specialties and the course has the objective to teach uh, knowledge and tools for the formulation and evaluation of economic uh, projects on renewable energies, thinking on the uh, actual power grid in Argentina and its legislation. So we have technical knowledge that the uh, diverse, the engineers of the diverse specialists have acquire knowledge on renewable uh, energies uh, fostering their professional careers. I have to highlight that the material of this graduate course uh, just that we just talked about, Manuela wrote a book that has to do with the formulation evaluation of project of green energy, which is the basic material for this course. We are working on, on increasing the post the graduate course offer on renewable energy because it's a sensible uh, area regarding, it's a special area regarding the future development. The, the university is developing the area of energy with different strategies through short programs or courses uh, to specialize and create uh, master's degrees in the area of renewable energy. The faculty of undergraduate and graduate courses has a feedback uh, regarding the professional activity of the teachers in renewable energy in the transference of formulas and evaluation of uh, renewable energy projects, the profit we evaluate for Camisa, which is the uh, company that that uh, that uh, manages the wholesale electricity market in Argentina, and how the renewable energies can connect to the uh, Argentinian power grid. We have evaluated uh, projects of biogas, biomass, and solar energy. In the second place, we want to share the experience that we are going through right now with the Ministry of Production, Science, and Technolog Technological Innovation of the province of Buenos Aires with the Orbita Conservatory, where we are working on a prospection of, tra of energetic transition for the province of Buenos Aires in Argentina. Because it's interesting to mention and to diagnose which is the state of the province regarding its electric uh, power grid in order to prepare policies and regulation for the to foster the development of renewable energies in the province. At the same time, we are working on a aggregate value to residual 
efflants with the uh, goal of developing prototypes that will allow us to advance in the teaching of renewable energies and the transference of this knowledge to our students. The uh, cattle, the, the uh, regarding uh, the uh, cattle uh, creation, we have effluents there, and the emission of greenhouse gases in our country. Uh, the livestock generates a, an important percentage of those gases and with great participation in the emission of greenhouse gases. Out of the three sectors, the generation of electricity uh, is uh, cattle raising and uh, transport, in the province of Buenos Aires, we have participation, uh, important participation regarding these emissions because the cattle stock raised 20 million of cows in, in 2019, and the province of Buenos Aires has 35.5% of the national livestock uh, comparing to the second province, Santa Fe, which has only 11% uh, of the livestock. So this is the situation that particularly uh, presents the University of Buenos Aires, where the city of La Plata and our university is located, regarding the potential of projects uh, in, in, in order to aggregate value to residues of cattle breeding. Okay, this is our short uh, 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 speech in order for you to know what we're working on. And I want to say that it's very important to dedicate ourselves to the study of renewable energies very clearly as a way forward to diminish climate change. We want to thank the organizers of the seminar. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Vice Dean Williams, and to the lady professor. Uh, we want to congratulate you for the book published. And you, we, you have showed us the importance of this type of evaluation of projects and how this is useful for the future work of uh, your uh, engineers. The Latin American uh, universities and the Chinese universities here present, we can share this sort of experience. I think that what we wanna do is precisely to be in touch with each other so the, you, the experts, can exchange uh, experiences and work together and to create alliances for the development of renewable energies and uh, uh, to the teaching of the Chinese language. Our colleague Sumiang will present the Professor Yuan Yehua, who speaks very good Spanish. She has worked in Chinese uh, embassies in Latin America, but she will speak Mandarin anyway. Welcome. Ming Yang again. Okay, thank you. So firstly, we wish to thank you for the La Plata University, two professors, a very detailed and patient explanation. And thanks for the Robert. And firstly, Robert first introduced the Professor Yuan. So firstly, China and Latin America is a far distance in geographically, and we have some development common, especially in the 
few two decades, China and Latin America in energy, we have the deep cooperation. And our CLEC for improving the practical value and for better <coughs> adjust the Chinese education to meet and service for all the countries, the social development, our CLEC was based on the Chinese education. And we advocate the Chinese plus. And what is Chinese plus? It can plus what? And we can plus the energy, clean energy, including traditional energy. We can plus the engineer. And our St. Thomas University we will cooperate the project. And of course, we can plus the agriculture. So for this project, we will introduce the professor from the South China Agricultural University, the vice director, and uh, we just uh, signed agreements with South China in Agricultural University. And we will I think it's a Chinese plus the good explanation. Now in Latin America, in Brazil and Mexico, and we build one, we want according to this seminar, we will invite Yuan Zhu Hua based on agriculture and share according to the science and uh, the Chinese uh, in the China and uh, Latin America, the uh, bridge between China and Latin America. Now I will tell you, master graduate, uh, graduate from Spain, and uh, he, she can speak uh, English and uh, Spanish. So, director Yuan Zhihua, and his career history is adequate. He has a long years English and Chinese, Spanish, and to the Thailand and uh, Colombia for international Chinese education. And in the university for the foreign ministry is uh, international relations and I have uh, two decades experience and uh, she, she was in the Venezuela and uh, Costa Rica embassy. And uh, now let's welcome the teacher Yuan Zhihua to share. Thank you. Thank you for teacher Sun. We can hear you. Thank you for the teacher Sun. And uh, thank you for the CLEC today. You can invite me to be a speech in agriculture, energy, uh, introduction. Back to Robert. Dear friends, good morning and good evening. It's a very or invited by CLEC and take part in this China Latin American Chinese Energy Seminar. I will use this opportunity to introduce our university in agriculture, in energy, and some work. And uh, we supported by the CLEC. We set up the Chinese and agriculture science and education development centers. South China Agriculture University is a double fourth class university in China, located in Guangzhou. Guangzhou actually is a 
Hong Kong, Guang, Hong Kong, Macau, Great Bay Area. We founded in 1909. As 550 acres and 113 years. This, the university is a comprehensive university with a complete teaching system from undergraduate to doctoral level. We have 25 colleges. We have 100. And one undergraduate programs, 140 master's programs, and 62 doctoral programs, and 11 postgraduate fees. Now there are more than 3,400 faculty members, and more than 50,000 students, including 38,000 undergraduate and 10,000 postgraduate, and we have nine national research platforms and six national key disciplines. In the 2022 QS World University Rankings for uh, Agriculture and Forestry, our university ranks 36 in the world. For the Shanghai Soft Science World Rankings, we ranked in 27th in the world in food and veterinary medicine. We have this Ten disciplines are ranking in the top one percentage of the global ESI rankings. And botany and zoology are ranked in the top thousands of the world. We attach great importance to cultivation of talent with scientific research cooperation and cooperation with enterprises and industry university research. The university have achieved full coverage of three national science and technology awards. We are in veterinary medicine, agricultural machinery, crop breeding, fruit, vegetable cultivation, processing, and preservation technology, poultry breeding, sustainable agriculture, and smart, smart agriculture. We have obvious benefits. And we actively carry out foreign exchanges and cooperations and since up to now. Our university already signed more than 240 cooperation agreements with more than 150 universities and research institutes in 45 countries and regions. And at the same time, we already found the 12 international institutes and laboratory. In 1980s, we already established the in commerce of China and the UNDP. Our alliance established the and with support of the Chinese government, in the few decades we made a progress. And this alliance is to promote the science, research, and innovation, and response. <clears throat> and now we have China and the Latin America, 14 universities, universities and some entrepreneurs and we have 63 members. Since the alliance established, we, act, we, we actively have some research. We also hold the more than fit. And uh, we made uh, several seminars and uh, agriculture. And we also take part in, in China and Colombia with some forum. And this activity is a great importance. And up to now, we actually were over signed uh, more than six, more than forty agreements, and uh, of all the and for the other agreements, including the, since agriculture and energy, actually. Now we already discussed with Colombia with some new agriculture cooperation. In the future, we, we hope we can have more and widely cooperation with Latin America. 
Stressing in the language and the humanistic cooperation will. Actually, we in order to to fund this center for the Chinese, we actually took part in actively in the China China and Latin American Forum to advocate its agreements to Chinese plus this concept. In March. In March this year, the university launched a mature recognition program for Chinese and Spanish courses with maximum universities, and、uh, how to host the Chinese plus agriculture project with Latin American countries, and with the guidance and support of CLEC, South China Agriculture University, signed an agreement with the CLEC. And Latin American universities to set up the first China Latin American Center for Development of Chinese Language. And、uh, like Miss Sun said, we already set the American with the Mexico and Brazil university. The signing ceremony should receive high attention and enthusiastic response from more than ten government media in China and Latin America. Uh，那我们接下来呢，我们会在啊，中文的教学。那我们会在啊，中文的教学。那我们会在啊，中文的教学。那我们会在啊，中文的教学。那我们会在啊，中文的教学。那我们会在啊，中文的教学。那我们会
when plant is called the dark story of these resources. Now we have taken the lead in developing diascoria corpses as a new non-fold energy and a medicinal plant resource and have independent intellectual property. And the second is the green negative carbon. This one is aiming at the problems of green hydrogen rotting and hydrogen storage and transportation cost in hydrogen energy industry, and it, including the, some green hydrogen production or alcoholic hydrogen. The company has also developed innovative organic waste disposal with utilization technology. I think biomass energy has a broad prospect. Some ex experts refer to some renewable energy. Actually, our university has an energy institute. We, in, we have in great part in new energy institutes to prove the protect the environment. In this part, we have done a lot of work. We hope we can, with Latin America and China's other universities, in energy parts have some cooperation, except China's Chinese education for energy part. We have great good basis on energy. Thanks again for the invitation of CLEC and the organizer of the seminar. It's so sorry for just now for the internet problems. Thank you all. Thank you very much, Professor Yang. Undoubtedly, it's very interesting what you have shown us and the cooperation of your university with uh, very good with government institutions and other universities in Latin America, undoubtedly. And uh, what is related to our today's subjects is the renewable energies and the Biomass Institute. Uh, we can undoubtedly have very good cooperation with our Latin American universities that are interested in, in the areas of renewable energies. So it is an example that we wanted today to show so that we can share it with the Latin American universities that are here with us and generate uh, together alliances and cooperations um, to the renewable energies in Chinese language. I want now to answer some questions that, that are, um, some people have made some questions. I talked about about Mauro, uh, Amado professor is saying, Professor Lu Yongxiang, is there a tendency that the wind parks go from the land to the sea? For this question, it's about an electric system. Because of the renewable energy, such as the wind and the solar system, for China, we use the multi energy. For example, wind energy, hydro energy fire energy to cooperate. And another point, plus, plus some station of the hydro from the electric generator. Another part was all the electric system. We now research was a region generate station and the system electric and 
the users for the demand of the users and all these skills to solve this question. It's a good question. Actually, for the Huan professors, he already said he did the micro electric system have these same problems. For the skill part, we commonly face these problems. I believe the Latin American countries for the renewable energy also face these questions. It's the same problems for the, all the human beings. We together, we together to solve it. It's the meaning of why we need to cooperate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Liu Yongxiang. I'd like to also for all the speakers uh, a question from Professor Alejandra Ankahima. The technology and innovation are growing very fast. What is the experience in the continuous updating of what should be taught in uh, the careers? I'll act in a short way. Uh, uh, please, the Dean of Juan Jose Negroni could answer this question, the Vice Dean Williams and uh, Professor Bendom and the Chinese uh, professors as well. Yes, of course. Thank you very much for your questions, uh, Roberto. I think that here uh, we there's a very important subject here. Not always we we can be in the top in the, the top of the technology. Sometimes the the companies, the enterprises are much faster than the universities. But this union is very important. Today we require that our students um, postgraduate, undergraduate, and postgraduate they both have the ability to learn and uh, unlearn so that they can reach the, the goals and the challenges. Undoubtedly, I think that the doctorate, uh, the master's, and the, uh, it is a very important uh, line in the development of the technological aspect and also the utilization of of this and the face of the problems that the society and face the pro society's uh, problems. Thank you very much, Juan Jose. Uh, Vice Dean Williams. Yes, I was born in a world that, you know, we, uh, but at that time, we didn't talk about the climate change and the impact that it could generate. But today we can see any news, any TV channel of any you know, uh, of any country in the world, so, and we can see that there are news that there are differences in the temperature averages and the difference in skies and the droughts. And there's a situation that we have an abundance of information that that is the demand that we have, so that we can generate enough and supply out to the teaching of our. Um, students so that we can face these situations that it's not only uh, to, gen to generate, to build a business, but also this is for survival uh, for all of, all of us. Uh, so this is the reality that we must face. Uh, so as a faculty, our obligation is, uh, we know that the plan of uh, studies, uh, there's a dynamic uh, in the technological advancement but uh, in that sense, we are trying to teach throughout our, uh, with our teachings and, and for the, um, the postgraduate and the complementary teaching as well. And, uh, and sometimes may, they can even get the help us to, 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 to face the reality and to answer the many questions that we have. The change that we are facing is very fast. So this question is uh, answer the challenge that we have as a professionals and engineers and as teachers, because of course we, have, we are facing uh, a very complex system that must be dealt with. And 
in this such a fast change. So I think that the greatest challenge that we have is to intervene in this complex system in a way that we can provide solutions and not make it even more difficult so that we can avoid uh, uh, we can avoid this global warming that are in our everyday lives, but it seems sometimes that we can have still further solution. There are lots of alerts that we have, be, uh, but uh, we still haven't changed our uh, mentality so that we can get to a real uh, solution that allow us to see some uh, uh, and this is a great uh, challenge and the teaching of the engineering for for that. I don't know if the Professor Lee and Chai would like to say some words regarding to to this. I think the reason of the opinion is very good, including the two professors. We about the energy, energy problems. Uh, indeed, uh, it's a uh, basic problem. We can see energy brings us too much many problems. Even to infect the world peace, environment, uh, economy, etc. I think uh, humankind. Uh, it's a good cooperation point. I'm so glad to in the earth in different direction. If we can do this well, it's meaning it's not only use this energy to be well. But over then, the environment, even in the world peace and uh, Civilization. I'm so proud of we can do these things. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Liu. I absolutely agree. I'd like to close this subject with a question, but more than a question, I would like to say that Professor Ankahima is telling us how the the character of globalization and the and the diff to the definition definitions of the career i think that now we are doing uh, as we are doing right now is globalizing uh, putting in contact academics of uh, chinese institutions in latin america in, related to the renewable energies without a doubt i think that you know that university in china and uh, the La Plata University and uh, Santo Tomas University and all others that are here with us, the subject of globalization is absolutely uh, important. How to teach our students that we must globalize. I, I saw how they, in the university in China, the um, place also in, in basic in their basic the English teaching we hope that in Spanish as well of course and we are we have having the basic the Chinese teaching is also in Santa Tomas University the Negroni Ding has been a pioneer in placing the engineering career plus Mandarin Chinese Mandarin and without a doubt we believe that we will be able to cooperate as a clerk with all the institutions that are interested in, in doing that. But also, it has to be both ways, right? Professor Liu, we hope that in the future, so that we can have a, a close conversation, uh, we can have in the university, uh, that the, in your, your university teachings of Spanish. To wrap this, I would like to thank Professor Liu Yongchang, to professor and academics that, uh, that is with us, Yang Yuhuan, the professor Pendon, uh, Vice Dean Williams, the Dean Juan Jose Regroni, to my colleague, subdirector of Clark Suming Yang, and also, without a doubt, and something very important to the interpreters. Uh, that today have cooperated with us. Xiaoxi, some from Spain, 
also Professor Wang Yu. He's Chinese, but he's professor of the Institution Computer of the Santa Thomas University in Viña del Mar. And we have uh, uh, Ramiro Mendoza yeah. from Brazil, and Professor Eric from Brazil, and has been really uh, an international seminar from Latin America, Spain, China. Uh, we are very happy for the audience that we had. As we said in the beginning, we are going uh, to develop, uh, to sustain this program. As Andrea said, thank you very much, Andrea and Bianca, for the organization, Andrea, for uh, the production. Uh, and she will keep working in the production of the seminar, which will be sent also to our land in our languages for the links and without that we've shown that the frontier uh, frontiers do not exist and we can work together i want to uh invite the universities that are here with us to get in touch and to start working to make uh, projects and generate uh, and knowledge together, China and Latin America. In Latin America, we can do, without a doubt, very strong alliances and very interesting alliances. Count with us, with CLEC, with our regional office for Latin America and the Caribbean, to work together in these alliances that give so much to the studies of uh, Chinese learning and specialties also, and, and today, uh, especially for the renewable energy. Thank you for all. Good evening in China. It is very late right now in China, and uh, good morning here in Latin America. See you next time. We will keep in touch for a new seminar in with other specialties. Thank you very much. Wait a moment, so let's go have a photo shot. So, Ms. Yuan, open the camera, it's okay? Okay, thank you so much for all the guests from China and Latin America, especially for the Chinese professors at so late in China. And so, thank you for all the Latin America. We want, to, according to this seminar, to accelerate the Chinese class, the program, and that our China and Latin America universities. Thank you all. Thank you all again. Thank you.